Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today is moving day. We're going to be moving something into this tank. So if you've been following on for the last few videos, you'll know I've been battling some algae issues in this tank. I think we've got on top of it. Um, I've added a few more plants. I've added some pothos from the fish room uh, on the JBL test, which was the one that was actually showing nitrates. It has gone down from 75 to uh, 40 parts per million. And on the API test, it's gone down from 5 to 0. So I'm not sure which one to trust, but at least they're both going in the same direction. So that's good. But today we are going to get the Mabu Puffer and get him up here into this tank. I've had him downstairs with some guppies in his tank for the last week or so. And he's completely ignored them. So I'm hoping that the Cardinals were my main concern, that they'd become an expensive snack. So they're going to keep an eye on things, but we're going to give it a go. And then my other thing is this tank here. So currently this has just got the Black Ghost Knife Fish and the Senegal Basher. Um, I've been kind of wondering what to do with this because both of these fish are quite elusive. They're quite, um, they're nocturnal. They don't come out much unless there's feeding. So there's not much going on in there at the moment. So I was considering ripping all this out and I might still do this. I was considering ripping out all the plants Getting a nice rockscape in there and going with um, some African cichlids, some mbunas, something like that. I mean, it's it's a small and a large tank. I mean, it's only three feet across, but it's also three feet deep. And it's got quite a decent footprint in there. So I thought maybe some of the smaller, like the Pseudochromus solosis or something like that, might work in there. But for now, we're going to put the little group of... A dwarf neon um, rainbow fish in there because at least they'll be fast enough to stay out of the way of the um, the basher who's hiding down there in the back somewhere you can just about see uh, and that will give some movement to the, the rest of the tank here is the lucky culprit that's going to be moving today I don't know if you can see in there but there's one of the guppies they will sit and quite happily eat together and yeah there's definitely no chomping going on, so I think that's as good a test as I can give him before we move on to the bigger tank, but I think he'll enjoy being in with other fish, and obviously it's a much larger tank with more ornaments, plants, lots more to investigate, so you should enjoy that. And then up here we've got the little group of rainbows, and they too will enjoy the larger tank. Um, if you remember from many moons back, these were kind of a, a breeding group purchase where I was told I was getting to pick males and females, but they kind of cocked up the order. Um, but still, nice fish, nice and active, feeding well and growing well, so we'll get them in a bit of a bigger tank as well. Um, and talking of feeding, this is my latest mini project down here. Um, these are some snails. So in this tub we've got some... Uh, giant African land snails, which I have kept before many many years ago um, and in this tub we've got some normal snails, these are the, the, the escargot snails, they're for human eating um, but this is a breeding group so there's some quite chonky snails in there and they're effectively going to be a breeding group that's going to produce live food for all my puffer fish so as the babies start to appear, and when they do, they usually appear thick and fast, that'll give me a, an almost limitless supply of food. Um, let's see, I've, these are just normal, this is, the, this is as big as these ones will actually get. And um, they won't get any bigger than that, whereas the giant African land snails will get big old, bigger than my fist probably. Um, so kind of half keeping them as pets as well, but they uh, as well, they spawn and produce young like nobody's business. Years ago I kept these uh, and we bought the snails. We bought two snails and then very quickly after we had about 2,000 snails and we we're getting overrun with them, didn't know what to do and ended up buying a skink. I think we bought a blue tongue skink to take care of our snail problem there. So now I don't have a snail problem anymore but I've got a really good guy that can take care of snail problems. So marry them together. We should be on for a winner. Let's get these guys moved now. So we'll start off with the Dwarf Neon Rainbows. Got them in here, just taken, siphoned out some of their tank water, filled a little bucket, scooped them out and put them in. The parameters are identical in this tank in terms of 
temperature and um, hardness and all that good stuff. So we could, I would normally want to acclimatise them for a little bit or acclimate them for a little while. But we'll just pop them straight in. So the puffer requires a slightly different approach in that I don't want to net him and get him out into the air and um, because puffers puffing up in the air it can be quite dangerous for them so I'm going to take my little bucket and get it in and kind of corral him into the bucket so we'll see how we go on with that one hmm. okay first problem bucket doesn't fit so smaller bucket required okay lunchbox we'll use that instead just don't tell any of my kids He can be quite fast when he wants to be, or she, shouldn't say he or she, because I don't know. But I don't want to get them all upset, I just want them to be generally in the right area. Not there. There we go, we've got him in here. I'm just going to give him a quick measure while we've got him here. So he's just shy of four inches in there. Um, but getting them in a little box like this gives you a great opportunity to have a real close up look. Make sure you can see everything clearly. Um, take a look at their eyes, their fins, and everything looks great. So I'm not going to extend it any longer than I have to. We'll get them upstairs. So it is actually a couple of degrees warmer in this tank, so I am going to let them float for a few minutes. But the good thing about the clear top is that you can see what else is going on. And everyone can see him. I've got the lights out just for that little bit of added security. Um, but yeah, hopefully things will go okay. My plan is that I'll put them in here. We'll leave the lights off for half an hour or so and then come back and have a look and watch continuously for him jumping down on everything. Okay, I think the temperatures have matched now. Um, I've added a little bit of the tank water to this as well just to be doubly sure. Everything seems happy, he's interested and keen to get out so let's do this. I'm just going to tip it over slowly. And out he comes. And introduction to the discus. Sorry for all the reflections with the lights out. But I kind of figured he'd do a bit of exploring. Maybe go and do a bit of hiding. So we'll let them settle in for a little while and then come back and have a look. I'm going to be here watching just in case. But even straight away, you can see all these tetras. He's been eyeing them up for the last half hour. He's decided not to go for any of them straight away. That doesn't mean he's not going to go. The discus look interested. They're like, what the hell is this thing? You'll have your fins off, mate. Leave them alone. Oh, 
Anyway, we'll let them settle in and then we'll come back and have a look in a bit. So far so good for these guys. Um, the bike share, which is over there somewhere, has had a couple of interesting looks, but they're just too fast for them. So I think this is going to work out. They're still huddling up in the corner a little bit. I'm sure they'll come out as time goes on though. So, still exploring, not chomped on any fish yet, or shown any interest in it. But mostly just checking things out. I think the discus are as interested in him as he is in anything else. They're keeping a respectful distance at the moment. But yeah, he's just getting used to his new surroundings, I guess. So, we'll go and get a few snails, give him a feed. Make sure he's not tempted to go for any of the cardinals. There's Penang going to say hello. So I'll try and strategically drop a few snails in. No, you silly discus, it's not for you. <laughs> so, there for you. a bit too early to be trying to feed him, but at least there's some in there for him.
Right, we're all done. Um, so far, so good. Um, he hasn't attacked anything in there other than a little bit of algae on the rocks, which was a bit of an unexpected benefit. Um, one of the cardinals literally swam into his face and he just kind of went, Bleh. The discus certainly seem to be interested in him. They've been having a good old look. But so far, everyone seems to be friendly, so hopefully that'll remain. Um, that'll do for this video. If you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. It always helps, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Uh, I didn't try and eat it. <laughs> I'm glad you all think this is funny. Shut up! <laughs> yes, everyone thinks it's hilarious that all the dogs are barking while I'm trying to do my outro. And everyone's walking around the house shouting and singing. Shut up!